Hey guys, welcome to our web development workshop from UPE Code. Um, today we'll be making a portfolio um, that you guys can have hosted and whatnot. So what we're going to be using is uh, any text editor that you have. I'm going to be personally using Visual Studio Code. You can just use something else if you want. It's completely okay. It's not mandatory at all. Um, nor will it like change that much. Um, but that's the text editor I'm going to be using. So a couple of announcements for our members in UP code. Our four tracks are going really well. We already had the first workshop for all of them. Um, a lot of people are excited for them. And uh, for the same one, the same topic, our tr mobile track is going to have a poll soon for our members. So here's of our upcoming external workshops. So we already had a game dev one and two. Those are actually posted on our YouTube. Already, this one will be posted on our YouTube as well. Um, our web dev workshop is right now. We're gonna have a machine learning and AI one, March 19th at 6 p.m. And a surprise one on April 2nd. Um, it's also gonna be mobile dev for the surprise one. So it's kind of like all four topics um, with the game web machine learning. So the surprise one, it's, it's gonna be like 10 minutes, 20 minutes surprise, and then we're gonna switch over to mobile dev. So for those interested in becoming a member, uh, I highly suggest you guys apply on this link. Um, like some of the main benefits for being a member is that you, we have a really immersive community. Um, we provide access to resources for you guys. You get to participate in the tracks that I mentioned earlier. You also get a certificate um, establishing that you completed said tracks uh, when you complete the track. Here's our social handles. We have our Discord which is our main method of communicating with our members, um, whether they are actually members of our programs or if they're just uh, interested in UP as a whole. That's the way we communicate with you guys and our social medias. So I always do this in every single workshop. Um, some of you might be bored of it, but if you guys want, you can send your LinkedIn's in the chat. And at the end of the workshop, I'll go through and I'll click them all. And you guys can exchange LinkedIn's that way you guys get more connections and it's easier to get a job in the future when you have more LinkedIn, especially when you guys come from like uh, different backgrounds and the same, like just when you have a lot, it just helps a lot. So I'll just wait for like, I don't know, until uh, 6, 12 and then I'll continue. That way you guys have a little bit of time to actually get your LinkedIn and you guys don't feel rushed and whatnot. All right, I'll just give it one more minute, actually. It's kind of fast this time. Yeah, all those links, it's so impressive how everybody just sends it out so fast. I'm always impressed. Maybe they know it's coming or something. But like if I knew someone suddenly asked for mine, it would take me like a minute to, to like uh, go to LinkedIn and get it. too fast yeah for real. you guys can always go clicking through as I start like the introduction to our workshop I'll just give you guys that's yeah it's already 11 so now let's get coding I didn't want to uh, have like too much stuff in our PowerPoint so let me switch to uh, Visual Studio Code you guys should be able to see that now um, I still have the welcome page open, so I'll give you guys a second to open your preferred text editor. That way we can actually start with the workshop and what we're going to be doing. Oh, also, um, let me get the link so you guys can download the assets really quick. Um, copy the link. 
Okay, so it's just a couple of images that I was going to be using. So these images are not mine. Um, I just pulled them somewhere off. They're just for educational purposes. If you're going to actually post your website, I don't recommend you use these images as they're just uh, temporary images so you guys can replace them later on and whatnot. So, um, yeah, basically just don't, don't publish these with these images. These are just images that are going to fill in for images for certain things. And we'll actually make a dedicated folder for them in our environment. Right now, I have an empty folder. We're going to start from scratch. I have an empty folder. I haven't even made the HTML file. Um, so I think I've got enough to have everybody time to like open an empty folder. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the three main things for our, our website. Now, we're not going to actually be making... Oh, my God. So we're not actually going to be making JavaScript but we're just gonna make one of these so I can show you guys how to connect your JavaScript to your HTML. And I'm gonna name all of them index just because that's some of the sometimes the standard to name the main one index. You can name your CSS like styles or like that. And then you would just reference it as styles and you can name your uh, JavaScript like script. Um, that's what most people do, like normal people. Um, but it doesn't really actually really matter what you name them. It only matters kind of for the index.html if you're publishing it, but um, not even because we're going to be opening it from the web, from the folder. So first thing we're going to do is establish that it's an HTML file and then open our HTML tags, just like that. Um, so if we want, we can just put a body inside of it and then an h1 just for now and then say hi. That way we can open it in our we can open it in our um, uh, Google Chrome, Safari, Internet Explorer, all those. So what you want to do is you want to right click this and then click Reveal in File Explorer. And when you do that, it's going to open whether you're Mac OS or if you're Windows, it's going to open a file explorer like so. So like this is on my desktop, just like I showed you guys. And you just double click index.html and it's going to open that website onto your computer, what we just created. All right, so I opened it and then I dragged it over here. So once we open it, we can actually close the file explorer. I know I dragged it off screen, but we can close the file explorer and we will never need to actually open the file explorer again because um, our website's right here. Interesting, this whole time I was using an extension. Yeah, it's actually kind of better to use an extension because then when you save the file, it can auto reload it or something like that. It has a bunch more features. This, every single time we make an edit, we need to save it and then we need to click refresh to update this page. And it doesn't have a lot of debugging features, et cetera, like that. So it's, it's probably more efficient, but I wanted to start at ground level. Okay, so if everybody sees like the high in their website browser, then I will continue. If anybody doesn't, just say it in the chat, but I'm going to continue for now. Um, you can either like click this or when you go back to your text editor, it's going to disappear. And we're actually going to remove the H1. We can keep the body, but the H1 is not going to be part of our, or that H1 is not going to be part of our final website. So outside of the body, we'll make a header that has some metadata and then it has a title and then it has some links to our other files. So this metadata is just adding some compatibility for um, devices with not your screen size. So it looks a little the same as you might expect. So it's usually, this is usually on most websites, but I mean, you don't have to do it. It's not something that's required. But the next one, our title is a little more interesting so we can customize what would be displayed in our right here. So right now it says index.html. So we can say this is called um, Zachary's portfolio.
now when we reload this, it's Zachary's portfolio. You can also add a description and whatnot, um, but I'm not gonna go too deep into that just because it's something you guys can search up and whatnot. So next thing I add, I wanted to show you guys comments. So you can add comments like this. And inside this comment, I'm just gonna say styles. And that's because the following one references a style sheet, namely our styles.css. So we need to tell it that it's our styles.css like that. Um, I'll make another comment just for JavaScript, which like I said earlier, we're not gonna actually do any JavaScript just because um, if we're gonna make a basic portfolio, but I wanted to show you guys in case you wanted to experiment, you can also write JavaScript right in here, but it's usually preferred to add a source and then write the JavaScript in there just to separate your files. And then I'll actually use some fonts like specifically one font but to show you guys know how to res like use a font that isn't on your computer so again we'll say that it's a style sheet and then we'll add the website that it comes from um i just use google fonts so i'm just gonna paste it in the chat which one i was gonna use and i'll paste in mine right now basically you don't have to download it you don't have to do anything and it references this website so the main downside is if you aren't online, then your website won't be able to load this font. But the main upside is usually when you host a website, it'll be online because the website's online. Um, but you could go to the website, download it, import it and whatnot onto your local machine and then serve it when you do the website. But that's a lot more work than just referencing like this and being able to use it. Okay. So next we'll actually add stuff to our body. So the first thing that we wanna add is our header that's going to hold our navigation links. So our navigation links are just going to be little links that reference the different sections of our page. So we can store this in a nav to be semantic and our nav is going to have an unordered list with a bunch of list items. Hope that helps. Okay, and it's going to have some list items. And these list items are going to have uh, links to sections of our page. So the first link is going to be home, for example, and then we're going to do a hashtag and then home. Or we'll actually just do hashtag. Although it doesn't, it doesn't particularly matter just for this one, just because it's home. And then we're going to do the second one that's going to be about page. And this one will point to about right here. And then this one is going to be our projects. And this one's going to be contact projects contact. And the last one, I copied one too many. So that there is our navigation. If we go back to our website, it's not going to look very pretty at all because we haven't actually styled it or whatnot. But we're going to do the styling at the end. So besides our navigation and our header, we're actually going to want like our name in it, just because. It's like standard practice to have the website name and then your navigation. Um, for this one, we're gonna be doing our name and then the navigation. Um, and someone asked to scroll up, so I'm gonna keep the top of the page for now while I do this. So it's not a little centered, but it doesn't matter too much. Um, so we're gonna make a div, which is just a divider between our objects or our content tags and an H1 that has whatever you want. So I'm gonna have my name. You could have two H1s and then put your name on one and then the other. Um, I'm just gonna have it like this, just because I guess I got a small name. It's pretty long, but I guess I got a small name and it fits just fine. Um, so now I need to scroll down. So I hope the person copying got it all. Um, I'll just give them another like 10 seconds. Okay, they took a screenshot, so that's perfect. Um, if I ever feel like I'm going too fast for you guys, just let me know. So the rest of our web page is actually going to be very nice because of how we're going to style our page. So I just want to make some comments so that way we know what we're handling. And then we're going to divide our sections of the page, these home about projects contact into semantic HTML some, uh, sections. So each one's going to have its own unique ID. And for this one, our main page, we're just going to do main. And then inside of our section, we're going to have some contents, but each of our sections, because they're like the same thing, so we don't restate the code, 
restate the styling, we're going to have all of them have the same class called page. And each one might have different contents or whatnot. Um, so we can either copy and paste this one now, or we can copy and paste it afterwards. Um, I'm going to copy and paste it right now, just because each one has slightly different one. The home has different than about, has different than projects, has different than contact. So I think copy and pasting it now is going to be most effective. So we want one for home, one for about, one for projects, and one for contact. And now we're going to rename them all. So this one's about, this one's projects, and we have to rename the insides too. And this is contact. And we're going to change the IDs. Notice how our IDs match exactly what we said our links go to. They match each other. We want that because this points to these sections. Okay, so now all these sections are pages. All of these sections have their own unique identifi identifiers. And now we're going to actually add content to them. If Again, if we go to our website, it's not going to look very cool. It just has our name, a bunch of empty space. That's going to be haven't styled it yet, which we, once we style it, it's going to look uh, really cool. So in our main, we could say something like we could add some text that just introduces them to our page. So we could say like, hello, uh, this is my, and then on the next line, we'll say portfolio. You can write any type of words you want. I don't know how to spell portfolio, apparently. Words. And that's going to display on our main page. Then we have the about page, which we are just going to add a title saying about, and then some dummy text. So I got some dummy text in P paragraphs already over here. Let me see if I can paste them in the chat first. If I can't, we'll just write them together. Uh, I can paste one in the chat, so I'll just paste the same that one. Wait a second. Okay. So, some dummy text that I'm just going to paste right there. Um, you can search up lorem, lorem ipsum generator. It makes dummy text just because I'm not going to write an about because the main point of this is programming. So, you can search up a generator and it generates for yourself. And then we're just going to include like three of them. So, I just pasted it three times and they have the same exact things. Okay. So that's it for our about. This would have our about information. And then for our projects, it's going to be a little more complicated. In VS Code, I believe you can also do lorem and then tab. Lorem, tab. Or I pressed enter, but oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually really cool. Lorem. Wow. I did not know that. That's actually really cool. Yeah. So if you guys wanted to, you guys can do that as well. Looks just about the same. Doesn't actually matter. That's actually a really cool fact. Thank you, Mo. So inside of our projects, we can also do a H1, like our above one. Um, you say we can also do lorem 50 to do 50 words. Wow, that's actually really cool. Wow, thank you guys. Learning things from you guys. It's a reverse workshop. So if I did lorem like 100, oh wow. That's awesome. Okay. Anyways, back to the workshop. Thank you, Carlos, for that cool tidbit. I hope everybody enjoyed it as much as I did. So uh, our projects, we're going to have them separated into three columns. So the three columns will be one column each for a project. That way you can display three of your top projects or three of the projects that you want. Um, so we'll give our container for these three, because we have to format these three, uh, project container or projects container, whichever one you want. Um, and this will just contain our three projects. Our three projects, we want them to kind of be similar. So we're going to have each project's going to be wrapped in a div, which is just the whole section, the whole column for that one. And then each one's going to have an image, which I'll fill out the information in a little bit. Each one's going to have an H1, and each one's going to have a P. Right? So for each one, I'm going to put the same ones just for simplicity. Like I'm just going to copy the same project and paste it two more times. But you guys can just, you know, go into that specific one and just change whichever uh, information that you want, which is kind of the beauty of how that we're going to style them the same. So for the image, we're wanting to point to are things that I had you guys download. So 
the things that I had you guys download are actually not for me, not in the project right now. So you can make a new folder and name it images, and then you can drag those to that one. Right. So I'm going to paste them right in there. So now I have both of them in there. Um, you guys can drag it into it. Um, for those of you that joined a little late, here is the link to the drive. Um, if you join too late to actually grab it or whatnot. Um, but just put them in images. You can name anything you want, but just for organization's sake, you put in images. And then we're going to reference it right now in our HTML. Um, some people like referencing it in their uh, CSS, but it's not like so, yeah, I'll scroll up to here. Um, some people like referencing it in their CSS, but when you reference it in your CSS, it's kind of, in my opinion, a lot of developers' opinions, it's kind of uh, not semantic because um, CSS is for styling and that's like an actual image that's going to be embedded. So that's an image that you're relying on being on your HTML page um, rather than like styling of it. So a lot of people, myself included, like been putting the image directly on our HTML rather than CSS, but it doesn't matter that much. Um, so Javier, I scrolled up. If you want to take a screenshot in case you have to get more. And I'm going to scroll a little down. We've already written so much, it's crazy. No problem. Okay. So we're going to point to it. It's actually really easy. We just go to images and then this is what the temp image is for. The background image is going to be used later. So the temp image is just like a temporary project image that you just put in there. It just does its job for now. Um, you can also add alternative text to it. So I'm just going to put project, but you could put like a small description of what the image is actually showing. That's kind of supplementary to it because some people either um, there's some browsers that actually use this for blind people and whatnot, but there's most likely it just can't load the image of some kind or whatnot, and it'll display that. So then we also do an inline style and we'll set the width to 100%. The reason we do that is because by default, our image doesn't have 100% width and we just want it to have 100% width. But if we reference it in our CSS, that's kind of kind of a drag to do. It's not hard, it's super easy, but like it's just gonna add more CSS when we can just put it right there. Okay, inside our H1, we'll just say project. And inside this, we'll have some more lorem ipsum text. Why I, I can't get your screen? I'm not sure I get your question. Um, like on Visual Studio Code, if it's, if it's not in this, then double click HTML, maybe. But I'm not sure I get your question that well. So I put that little trick that someone taught Mo and uh, Carlos, the lorem 50, I just put it in there. Um, that way we have dummy text for the project. And then we'll copy and paste this three times. So paste, paste, paste. Uh, my formatting is a little weird. My formatting is turning out weird. Let me copy it differently. Yeah, the recording will be sent later. Yeah, it'll be posted on YouTube. Uh, let me try copying it like this. Okay, so I copied like this because I, I care about formatting a lot. You guys don't have to, um, but like you can just paste it like this, copy it like this if you guys care about formatting like me, but you don't particularly need to. So I pasted it, so there's a total of three, and then we're just going to leave it like that. Um, so... If you guys want on your off time, well, if you, you know, want to improve it, then you put your own images, you put your own descriptions, you put your own titles for your own personal projects. Um, if you don't have any projects, you could do small ones. You could mention some class activity that kind of sounds advanced and you could put it in there. Um, you can also embed an A little link right here that could reference the project. If you have a GitHub for it, if you have some personal online thing for it or whatnot. Um, so there's different things that you guys can do with that. And then finally, or for our final page, we're going to have a small contact one. So we're going to have an H1 tag that just mentions that it is a contact, just like all the other pages. 
and then we're going to have a p tag for our email um if you guys want to put your email if you guys want to put anything on the website this is where you would put it so they can contact you and then i'm going to put a phone number too which i'm going to put with dummy information uh, they do a space plan for yeah okay you guys have any questions so far? Is everybody keeping up? I think everybody's good. Okay, and there's one final thing I wanted to add, which is that background that I mentioned, which I know I was just preaching, don't add the images. Um, inside that but we're gonna do the images inside that i'm trying to one of my slash headers is in red um so the reason for that might be that you don't have the first header so it might be like this and then it might make it in red or like if you have an open one right here then it might make it in red like it there's a couple different things it's probably the amount of uh things that you have like if you the meta doesn't have a closing one the title has a closing one the link doesn't the script doesn't and the link doesn't again so it might be any of those that is causing the header to be read it also could be like you didn't finish it or something or you didn't finish the last one yeah it'd make the header red okay perfect so the last thing that i wanted to add is that body thing um you can add it this one, theoretically, we could add it anywhere because we're going to break out of the document and add the background. That way it has like a slightly cool effect. But I'm just going to add it at the bottom of the body and we're just going to have it with the class background. Now, basically what we're doing is we're adding some object, some HTML object that we can access in our CSS. It's empty. It's got nothing in it. We're just going to add stuff in our CSS. It's like artificially produce an effect on our page. Um, and that's it for our HTML. So if, if we reload our web page, it's, it's going to have like a bunch of junk. Um, it's not going to look that nice, but that's because we haven't actually styled it. And styling is probably one of the most important things when you're doing front end. Um, I'm going to need to watch the recording so I can start using VS Code and can't get it to work. If you have any questions, I'll be free to ask uh, answer them. How do we load the web page? So right click here and then reveal in File Explorer. It'll open this and then double click this and it'll open or you can you can right click and open with and choose whichever one you want. I use Google Chrome, but you just double click that and it should load the web page onto whatever uh, editor you have. Yeah, no problem. No problem. And feel like if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and ask. Like I was I'm aiming for one hour, but if it lasts until like an hour and 20 minutes, uh, I'm sorry, guys, just because, you know, I really want all of you to learn that are here right now. But I'll get started with the CSS for now. So the CSS is just as lengthy as the HTML, sadly, but it's probably not more important because it relies on the HTML, but um, it's kind of like j just as important, just as important. I'm actually in the screen, but I can't see. Um, that might be because you have to, when you open Visual Studio Code on the, you have to click up here. So this expands and then it says, um, open folder. And then when you open the folder, then you can actually access this stuff. I opened the blank folder and then I made all this stuff. Okay. Hopefully Jose can help a little bit too. Um, if you don't have Visual Studio Code, it might be a little harder to, to handle all your stuff. Just because like you, it's, um, like you'd have to open them all in your file explorer like this and then open each one and whatnot. Um, so it might be a little messier. Okay. So to start off, I'm going to remove the margin. I can't spell margin, margin and the padding for everything. And I'm also going to increase the font size for everything by a ratio of 1.6 view width. So 
that's 16, 1.6. That way, if we go back to our website, we can see some noticeable effects. Everything is going to be kind of zoom, and everything is going to have this standardized font size now, uh, which we'll edit later on. Okay. Then we're going to uh, access our header variable, and we're going to change it so that it's going to take up the whole screen. So it's going to be our setup is going to be our header, our navigation on the left, and everything on the right. It's going to have a width of 30 view width. Um, this is for like your viewport, the view, the whole view, the view width 30 of it. So basically 30% of the screen. That's whatever browser is opened. There's going to be 100. Just so you guys know, it's going to be fixed position, meaning that even if we scroll, it's not going to move. And our Z index, we're going to set it to five, so it's always above everything. And I'll put the background as white smoke. Then we'll edit the display and we'll set it to flex, which is just a, a display setting for uh, HTML stuff that allows you to do different configurations. Um, the only drawback of it is, is that when something has display of flex, if you have a lot of them, it might, like a lot of objects in it, it might be a little laggy and whatnot. So it sacrificed on execution time, but that's only if you have a lot of, lot of them and you update them constantly or whatnot. But in our case, it's just perfect to use. So then we want to um, set the direction of our thing so that it's uh, downwards vertical. So a column, rows are like this, horizontal, and directions are vertical. Sorry, you're going too fast. I am will try to slow down a little bit. Um, but it will be recorded, yeah. The thing is, we do have like quite a bit of content. I'm hoping I'm explaining each one at least. It's the 100 words per minute kicking in. Yeah, maybe. Um, I'll also leave it up with the code like I did last time. I'll leave it up so that you guys can focus on copying it then. And then I'm talking about it as I write it kind of thing. Um, no, that's fine. Um, so we want to align the items to the center and we want to justify the content to the center. That way our things are centered, just our pages are centered. Um, nothing to, uh, well, not our pages, our uh, navigation link and our little header that says, in my case, Zachary Santana. So this is what we're adding in, in our header, which I'll close this script. Okay. So the div inside the header will make it so that it never leaves, so absolute. And we'll also say that the z-index is 3. And we'll format it a little off the top, so 1.8 view width. So it's instead of doing it based on the height, I did it based on the width just because of how uh, stuff scales and whatnot for your phones and stuff. And I'll set the width to 100. And for this one as well, I'll do display effects and then justify content center and then align item center, which I kind of switched up. It doesn't matter which order. Just to keep consistency, I'll do that. Um, and now, if we actually reload our page, we'll see a little bit of difference. So we'll see that our, kind of how I said that 30% of it will be our header, and then the other 70% will be this. You see this text kind of clips, this temp image clips everything. On this side, it's kind of not formatted at all, but this side's starting to look better. Um, so to make it look even better, we'll add some styling to our H1, which is our name. In my case, Zachary Santana. So our H1, we'll set the font size to 200%. We'll set the background uh, of it to a red, green, blue alpha value of 0, 0, 0, 0. 0.4. The last one is the alpha value. So it's going to be like a slight gray, hopefully. Yeah, just like that. We're going to set the padding to 10 pixels and 15 pixels. This means the top and bottom is going to be 10. The left and right is going to be 15. Usually for text, the top and bottom 
should be a little less or whatnot, like they have different proportions just to make it look nice. And then we're going to set the color to white smoke. This means that the text is going to display as white instead. And we'll use that font that I had you guys do right here. That way our green name goes from looking like this to looking like this. So it looks a little more standard. Okay. So all we've done is uh, added some styling to our header, header div, and the h1. Now we'll add some styling to our navigation. Um, so we'll make the font weight a little lighter. And then we'll align it to the center. And we'll set the margin top to A to B width. That way it's going to look a little different. It's going to look in the center. They're all like kind of aligned. Um, then we're going to add some styling to our unordered list and we're just going to remove oops we're just going to remove the dots so these dots go bye bye when we do this so our unordered list we do not want a list style type you could have like numbers or whatever there's other different list style types we just don't want one for our navigation and then we also want our list item have padding five pixels. That way they're spaced apart a little bit. Okay. So our A tags inside of our list items. So here's our list items, A tag. So our links, we're gonna add some styling it to as well. We'll set it to inline block, meaning that it'll be kind of like a straight line for them to write how much the width changes and whatnot. Um, we'll set the font size for these to 250%. We'll set the tech decoration to none because usually links have that line. It kind of looks disgusting. We remove it, we made it bigger, and now they're blue. So later on, we're gonna, or right now, we're gonna set the color to black so it's kind of not blue. The blue kind of looks weird. So it doesn't change when we hover over it, but we're gonna change that in one second. Um, but next thing that we want to do is we want to add some padding to these. So 10 pixels, 15 pixels, just like we did to the uh, H1 up here. They have the same padding. And we'll do a border radius of 1 a.m. And a transition so that our color, when we hover over it, we're going to change our color. When we hover over it, we're going to change our background. So first, let's actually do that so you guys see what I'm saying. We're going to select it when it hovers, like so. And then we're going to change the color to, we can change it to dark red. And the background to uh, a slight discolor. This one I'll do 0.1. OK. And I'll show you guys what it looks like in a second and what we're going to do to change it. So now it looks like this. We hover over it. It instantly changes. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a transition. It's going to be for 0 0.4 seconds. It's going to be for color. And the type of transition is ease out. You can copy this and paste it. So there's two. And we're going to change the color. So not only are we transitioning the color, but we're going to transition the background. So when we refresh, it slowly transitions it. That way it's a little nicer. Does anybody have any questions before I continue? We're about like one third done with the C CSS. Yeah, I can scroll up to the top. So this is up to line 40. You see the background of the links are kind of rounded. Okay. Um, where will you post the recording? YouTube, not squared. So, yeah, I put it, I've made it rounded with the, the, where is it? Border radius. Yeah, if we remove this and we refresh, they will be squares. You can totally have them squares. It's completely fine. I just put border radius 
Um, I didn't explain that part, so that was a very good question. Uh, you guys don't have to include it. I thought it looked nice with the border radius. You can also add a bunch of other effects. Um, I just wanted to go over the basis of how you would do this. Okay, excellent. So now we're gonna actually style our pages. So we're kind of done with this section, um, and now we'll style this section. Yeah, the, the recorder will be on YouTube. The link will be in code channel. Yep. Okay, so the pages. So we're gonna access the pages, and we're gonna access every element in the pages. And the reason we're gonna do that is we're gonna set them all to black. Even though they're already black right now, we want just like the default color for them to be black. And then later on, we're gonna change stuff that might change the colors and whatnot. Um, but after we access all the colors, we're just gonna access, actually I'll do this above. So that way it's sequential. We're gonna access the page and we're gonna add some styling to it. So the width of it is gonna be the 100% of the whole possible minus 30 view width. Um, can I have the link for the channel? Uh, I don't have it on hand, but if you search up, oh, someone's, yes, thank you guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the width is 100% minus 30 view width. So just like I said, it's overlapping right here. So we're going to set the margin of the left to uh, 30 view width, which is the size of our header. So if we save it, and now it's not overlapping. Now they start right here, just doesn't look very good yet. Okay, so we'll set the color to white. And this is where that black comes into play. The color white is just for everything that's not going to be um, like the just the page itself. And then we're going to add some oops, padding to it. So we're going to do 10 pixels, 30 pixels, 30 pixels, 10 pixels. It's a little weird. Uh, dot page is going to access the sections we made. So this section, this section, it means using this class. So all these that we want as a whole page, we gave them the class page, and then we access that class using dot page. Okay, if you guys ever have questions, Javier's on a roll. <laughs> He's asking all the good questions that I keep on skipping over. Okay, and we'll do the minimum height 100% of whatever the browser sees, so 100 view height. So now each one has its own little page. They're just not styled. Project, the min height is 100, so it kind of goes past it, um, which in some cases it might, and that's fine. But um, actually, our final product, we're not going to have anything of 100. That's just for you guys in the future. If it's going to be over 100, you can have it over 100. Now we're going to do display flex again. Um, we're going to set the flex direction to column. So inside our pages, they're all column, and then we're going to align the items to the center. So what this means is that all of them are going to have their elements to the center, just like this. So the about is now centered. The projects are now centered. Contacts now centered. Okay, perfect. Um, so now our headers for our pages, we're going to edit them. So dot page h1, our headers. We're just going to increase their font size by 200%. So contact looks bigger, projects looks bigger, about looks bigger, and hello, this is my portfolio looks bigger. Uh, text overlapped again. Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Like, could you be more specific? Like, did it overlap on the left-hand side? Did it overlap down here? Just a tiny bit more for specific. But for now, I will continue the lorem lorem part. Um, it might look like that. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, we'll fix that when we get to it because we haven't actually we haven't actually set the bounds for this and whatnot. So we'll fix that when we get to it. I see what you mean though. Yeah, mine mine does too. If you saw. Slightly, slightly does. I think same, yeah, same thing. Please. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't actually, we haven't accounted for that. So I was gonna do this a little later, but we'll fix it right now, actually. So how we added 30 pixels. Um, now we want to adjust our width so that, so there's 30 pixels on each side, 60 pixels. 
we subtract 60 pixels from our width for our dot page. So when we refresh the page, now they're proper. Yeah. So now none of your stuff should be blending. And you shouldn't have a scroll bar down here. That's kind of important so you don't have a scroll bar down here because it usually looks really ugly if you have a horizontal scroll bar. Although it's fine if you do, if your website's based on that and whatnot, or if it's like a good feature. But if you have it by accident and something that's supposed to be like this, it's not that great. And also you guys can see if you click these, they already work. So it's, it redirects us to it. I'm gonna remove at the end, it adds it to the end. So if I click about it, it adds a dash about. So every time I refresh the page, it would go to it. So I'm just gonna remove it. So it doesn't go to it when I refresh the page. So it stays where I am. Okay. So that was a good catch. I was gonna add it a little later, just because uh, I wanted to address it like bugs. <laughs> but we'll just continue adding styling. Okay, so for the pages that are not the main one, um, so there's a little advanced CSS selector. For the pages that are not the main one, um, we'll set the position to relative. And there's the index to two. Now, um, actually, we don't technically need to do this, um, but if you wanted to add a feature like it overlaps it or whatnot, it might be useful to do so, uh, anything like that. Okay, so about, uh, we'll do it for all of them. So we have one for main, we have one for about, we have one for projects and uh, contacts, right? Projects and contact. Okay, so each of these targets the individual uh, ones that they are. So for our main, we'll set the background to a RGBA of 193, 39, 45, 0.7. It's just like a shade of red that looks kind of nice. Um, we'll also justify the content to the center. What that means is currently our thing is up here. When we justify it, it's gonna be in the middle of it. And now it's red like we said. Okay. And we'll do font size 200%. That way our thing looks takes up more of the screen. Um, you can add fonts to this. You can make it look really nice. Um, I just decided that that is something I just can do in your off time rather than right now, just because I showed you guys how to add fonts. So it's kind of like a challenge for you guys, because you could add really nice fonts to this and make it look nice. We're going to add a background to this soon. So our main gets dialed like that and our about section, we'll add a background to it as well. And we're going to have like the same system, RGBA and then 57, 181. 745, 0 0.7. And then for our projects, we'll have a background that is RGBA, 158, 0 0.93, 0 0.7. And I'll copy, I actually copy, I'll copy up to the first one. So the first one, main is this, in case you guys get like the numbers, it's a lot of numbers about is this and projects is this okay that way you guys don't have to worry about copying the numbers there is one more that we have to do though so the background for this one we'll do rgba uh, 0 0113 0.7 i'll copy this one as well And then for the contact, we'll actually also do the minimum height is the content. This means that when we go down, our contact just looks like this. It's like a little, little footer, nothing big. All right, okay. And the final styling that we're at is the background. It's a position absolute. And we're just going to add some basic styling to make an image display on our screen. So we want it to be as big as the first page plus the 
60 pixels. It should be 40 pixels for the height. Um, just to see it, we'll do background color, let's say black. That way it's loud and clear. Oh, it's not loud and clear. I need to do more. Um, I need to actually, what was it? I, I think I'll get to it in a second. I think I'll get to it in a second. Okay. Is that added something wrong? Um, it looks pink. Yeah, it should, it should look like a pink for now. Um, after this, then we'll just reference our background directly. So images, oh, I didn't set more background information. That's probably why background.jpg. We'll set the Z index to display behind the right thing. So negative one. We'll set the background size, which is the part that I was forgetting earlier to show you guys to cover. And we can add some effects to it. Um, final finish, but filter, saturate, 1.3, blur, three pixels. So it's a little blurry and then background position, 80%. Okay, so now if we refresh it, we should see the background display right here. Oh no, maybe I messed up a little bit in my uh, my background. Um, let me try moving this up here real quick. Okay, yeah. So my problem was that um, I had the div that said class equals background down here. Actually just move it, cop, uh, cut it. Put it above your header, but below your body, right here in between them. So, just right in the middle, right there, just right there. That way it's not behind everything. That was my bad. That way it displays right there. So, does anybody have any questions so far? Anybody needs to copy any of this. Yes, please. Is that what you need to copy? Right now I'm just opening um, this thing real quick. Do you guys have any questions so far? Yeah, the bottom. What did we have to move? Okay. So, let me just, okay. So the bottom, I'm not sure if you mean by the bottom of the page, but it should look like that. And your code, the bottom looks like this for the CSS. And I'll show what we had to move right now. So what we had to move was, I had this background, that wasn't there, it was right here. It was exactly like this. So what I moved was I cut this, and I scrolled up, and I put it, I went to body, I pasted it, so it should be in body, but behind header. It should be right there. But instead I included it at the end. No problem, no problem. Okay. So, it's cutting it close to 7 p.m. So, um, the one thing that we are forgetting, it's 7 p.m. So, if anybody needs to go, that's completely okay. Like, I won't, no hard feelings. But I want to style this projects one, right? And the other ones are kind of finished styling. Like, you can add some final touch to this one. Um, the image goes a little off. So, let me go to the image. You could edit the image however you want. So you could, um, right here, maybe 40 pixels. Yeah, and it'll fit it nicely, the image now. So what I did there, I just changed the page to 40. Um, see, if we did 60, then it did it 20 pixels more. And I know it's 20 pixels more because of how I did the padding. Uh, this is right, uh, right top and then left bottom, um, something like that. Yeah, oh yeah, right top, left to bottom. So 
the right and the left is 40 pixels. So when we do the calculations for the uh, page, you have to do it 40. That way it doesn't go too far. That way it's flush. So for this one, you guys can, um, the challenge is kind of improve this font. Just find a font online, uh, do the same thing that we did for the other one. Um, for the about, you can add your own stuff. So you can add your own text about yourself. Um, well, I'll be posting this project's code somewhere. If you guys want, well, I'm not actually done. I'm just explaining uh, what you guys could do if for the ones that I like, have to go like now or soon. And then I'm going to continue with projects and then we'll be done. But if you guys really want, I could post it somewhere. And then I could add a bunch of comments and whatnot. But that might be like later. That way you guys can examine it and whatnot. Okay. And then for projects, we haven't finished it. Um, so those of you that have to go like soon, just watch over the recording. And then for contact, you can add um, colors to like the phone number, email, or anything like that. But now we will finish the styling for the projects. So scroll down to where your projects are stored. And we'll just make a new reference to our projects container. And we'll set the display to flex, right? And if we go back over here, refresh now, our projects is just fine. Three columns, just like I said. And it has the headers for them. You can switch the, the location of the image and the header. Some people do the header and then it. I thought it would clutter with the projects. And then you have a description of the project right here. Does anybody have any questions? Lost connection. <laughs> but this is our final web page for now. You guys can pick a, a different image. I tried to include methods of changing the website for you guys. So I tried to include, uh, I somehow deleted the background image. I tried to include like different ways of editing the code rather than focusing on making every aspect look nice because I wanted to keep you guys here for only an hour. Um, but if anybody has any questions on how they would add something, how they would change this to make it their own, anything like that, those are the best questions right now.